test and maybe a warning shot. North Korea fired an intercontinental ballistic missile, thought to be similar to this one, that went higher and stayed in the air longer than any other missile they've launched. South Korea and Japan say it could be a new weapon. We condemn it in the strongest terms. The U.S.'s top diplomat calling on Kim Jong-un to stop. I see a North Korea which feels that it has a moment to do these things with Russia and China having its back at the Security Council with Russia needing its assistance. A former Canadian ambassador says it does not mean an attack is imminent, but it shows North Korea seizes advantages where it can and is trying to gain leverage with the next president. Kim Jong-un has changed his uh, stated objective from uh, North Korean-led uh, unification to something that uh, looks belligerent. The head of a South Korean-backed think tank tells Global News a more defiant North Korea could expand the Russia-Ukraine war, where the U.S. says Pyongyang deployed thousands of troops. We've not yet seen these troops deploy into combat against Ukrainian forces, but we would expect that to happen in the coming days. North Korea has not fought a war since 1953 so their potential impact isn't yet clear. But the bigger question is, what is Kim Jong-un getting in return? What they would really like is Russian technological assistance for their nuclear submarine program, their satellite launches, their missile tests, and their nuclear tests. Snyder says at least some of that may have already occurred. I think the fact that we have seen this um, uh, possibly solid fuel launch uh, to the longest range to date, uh, obviously will raise the question of did Russia help? Deepening cooperation, potentially meaning a greater threat. Nathaniel Dove, Global News.